Okay, so today we're going to be making a rolling pin out of some hawthorn. So I'm hoping to end up with something like this. And to start with, we need a log, such as this. This is a piece of hawthorn, which we cut off the estate. And I'm going to show you gradually the stages of turning that into that. Hawthorn is quite a close grain wood, so it's, it's ideal for rolling pins and other utensils you might use in the kitchen. It's relatively easy to saw because it's green wood, it's quite soft. And this offcut won't go to waste, I'll probably turn something else from it. So first we're going to split this log using the axe. And we do that from the, uh, the pith, which is the central point of the tree. Now, if we were to turn this as a whole log, um, we would find it cracks or splits from that central pith because of the shrinkage as the wood dries out. So remember, this is a green piece of wood. But if we split it into half or into quarters, it shouldn't uh, crack on the finished item that we turn. The pith is slightly off centre, so I just need to bear that in mind that there's less wood to work with this side, but obviously there's a lot more here. But it just depends how the tree grows, because uh, all trees are unique, and you never know what you've got till you open up a log. So we split across the pith. We're going to pull the axe out and continue this straight line across the pith. If I didn't do this, if I carried on knocking the axe in, you can see here we've got this crack forming. It just means the split's going off at its own tangent and we don't want that. So I'm going to pull the axe out and do the next bit. There. So you can see now we've got this nice line across the pith. So that's where the cleft is going to go now. Almost there. There we go, got two logs. Generally with a log you can usually get four pieces out of it, it depends what you're making. I'm going to start cleaving the, uh, the sides off this and we want to end up with a crude cylinder kind of shape. So there we go, so that's what we call a billet, which is basically just a rough cylinder Hewn, that's ready to go onto the lathe now. So first of all, we're just going to get the poppets lined up. So the poppets are these, which uh, hold the billet. Okay. Then we use a key and a hammer. There. So line it up on the pins on these poppets. So just make sure that's level. I, I tend to do everything by eye. There we go. So you see we've got these uh, marks made by the pins on the poppets. So we can use this tool called the gimlet, just to make the holes just a little bit bigger. And it's just so the uh, pin's got something to, to grip the piece of wood in and it doesn't fly off. So we're just making them a bit deeper just so they don't slip out. So I'm going to put it, the cord on. Just line up on the holes. And use the crank this side to, to attach it. Now we can start cutting. So to begin with shaping the billet, the first chisel we use is the roughing out gouge. It's a big curved chisel. So we're going to cut a section in here first, and then we're going to turn it over just so the cord's got something smoother to run in. So I work with all sorts of different kinds of wood. Oak's quite nice to work with. I do use holly sometimes, it's quite heavy wood and it, uh, it warps and twists um, and that does actually crack even if you uh, half and quarter it, it can uh, misbehave sometimes. Okay, so now we're going to turn this over, so these cords running in this smoother bit we've just cut out. And the reason for that is it's just uh, less wear and tear on the cord, runs faster and it runs smoother. Uh, lathes are not a new invention, they're a very old invention. But the, uh, the pole lathe is um, the first uh, solo operated lathe. This kind of pole lathe is a moderner version of a medieval contraption. So if you're interested in uh, traditional wood turning, this is a good lathe to start with. So next we're going to use the flat chisel. And this chisel we use to uh, just make the billet nice and smooth basically a finishing chisel. That's coming up nicely. 
You uh, can see the different grains, there's a couple of minor knots in it, it adds to the effect. And now the last stage is to turn the ends. So we're going to use the spindle gouge now, which is the same as the roughing out gouge, except it's smaller. And use that just to shape the round, like that. So now we're going to use the skew chisel, which again is just a smaller version of the flat chisel. So the spindle gouge has just rounded it nicely, and I'm using the skew just to smooth it off, which has got to be a bit gingerly with because the skew is the, the most difficult chisel to use out of the four. Because if you get the angle wrong, it will dig in and it gouges into the work and it ruins it basically. That has happened a few times. So the final thing is to burn the ship, which we're going to use these shavings off the same piece of wood. So burnishing just basically smooths the grain down. It's a little bit like sandpaper. There we go, so that's done. Now the next stage is uh, to season this, which it shouldn't take too long, a couple of weeks, something like that, in uh, a coolish place. Just somewhere in the house for a couple of weeks just to dry out on its own, and then I can rub it with some oil, and that's its finish then, basically. So we compare it to the uh, previously finished one. You can see that, I mean, this is a different piece of wood, this is cherry, but you can see that's had an oil finish on it. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Every piece of wood is quite unique, and it's also unique what you make from it. No rolling pins the same. This kind of setup you can do in the shed if you've got one big enough. I started with mine in the garden. It's quite portable, really. When you make something from scratch, you make something that's really unique. It's quite relaxing to do. You don't have to plug it into anything. It's uh, power free. I recommend it. Have a go.